Bert. There's another plane. It's a black one. Ah, uh, well, that's swell. Well, that's funny. Look, Robert. I thought they all had to have license numbers or something. This one just has a big X on the wing. Twenty-one new planes have been added to the search for the prairie schooner, cracked coast-to-coast -coast airliner which has been missing for the past 52 hours. Good morning, Mr. Goring. Any news? No sign of either plane yet, sir. Got a further report just a moment ago. Where's my son? Over there. Hello, Dad. Oh, this is bad about these planes. Very. It isn't our fault. No, but five ships have crashed mysteriously all within the last two weeks, and three of them have come from our factory. I can't understand how those pilots keep getting into trouble. And all in this district. It's terrible, I know it is. But our ships aren't to blame, Dad. They were perfect when we sold them. Yes, but these accidents are hurting our good name, Carl. Is that joining the search? I had to rush an overhaul job to get it out. What about the government planes? They're sending them out just as soon as they come in for maneuvers. A wire came from Washington, from Inspector Gallagher of the Bureau of Aeronautics. Uh-huh. That means he'll be in this afternoon, doesn't it? That means he's moving his investigation here. In nearly every case, an air accident can be traced. Sometimes it's the weather, sometimes faulty plane construction. But the reports prove that none of these mysterious crashes were due to weather. Then you do blame the planes, huh? Tell me, when these ships were found, were there no clues as to what happened, what was wrong? Carl is in charge of construction. He'd know more about it. They were too badly smashed to tell. You fly, I suppose? My only interest is in motors. Inspector Gallagher? We're anxious to cooperate in every way we can. Why not have a test flight made with one of our planes? As a matter of fact, I think you should, for our sake. I'll arrange for just that tomorrow morning. Blackwood can certainly handle a plane. He's one of the best. Used to make test flights for me back east. John Gage's daughter, Helen. She and my son are practically engaged. He can't tear the wings off, so now he's trying to burn the motor up. <laughs> he must be doing over 200. He certainly knows how to handle a plane, though. Say, I'd like to meet him. What for? Oh, I don't know. Just to see if he really has a lot of nerve or just no sense at all. <laughs> now, don't tell me you still have that schoolgirl idea that flyers are romantic. Oh, of course not, Carl. There's usually more tragedy than romance in flying. Airline up, for instance. 
Hasn't been found yet. No. And that crash is what started these government investigations. Flash, with both pilots and all passengers except one dead, the missing coast-to-coast -coast airliner was found wrecked today on a mountainside 15 miles southwest of Greenville in Morgan County. The wreck was located from the air by Lieutenant Jerry Blackwood, U.S. Army Reserve, who was flying one of the planes in a wide search made for the airliner. A squad of state police, accompanied by Inspector Gallagher of the U.S. Department of Commerce and Henry Goring, the plane manufacturer, immediately rushed to the vicinity of Greenville. You heard badly, Doctor? Can you talk? Can you tell us what happened? We were flying all right when I saw a plane above us to one side. Had a big X on the wing. An X? Suddenly, there was an explosion in our plane. Then everything got dark, like, like it is now. Doctor, allow me to present the eminent Dr. Norris, Inspector Gallagher. How do you do, Dr. Norris? Gentlemen, I have some delightful old wine. <laughs> Mr. Goring tells me that you have a theory to solve these mysterious plane crashes. It's no longer a theory. It's a certainty. All of these accidents are the work of one man. You mean that fellow's story about the plane with the X on the wings? Nonsense. Why, that man's out of his head. On the contrary, he was perfectly rational. I've talked with the doctor who attended him. Gentlemen, but why should anyone want to do a thing like that? Re direct result of the war. Thank you. As I listened to the wild ravings of the flyers in the base hospital, I recognized the dangerous possibility of just this thing that some one of them might go mad on the fixed idea of killing in the air. Churches had a strong pride in their score of victims. The killer, in this case, is obsessed by the fixation to add to his wartime record. Such a mad man would have given himself away long ago and been recognized. No, not if his is a case of split personality. In his same condition, he is living somewhere here amongst us, unsuspected. A supreme egoist, satiated for a time with his victories. Then suddenly the brain mechanism goes out of gear, and he becomes the winged demon again, a bloodthirsty killer. I'm sorry, Doctor, but I just can't believe that. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. They just picked this up at the wreck of the airliner. A confirmation from Pilot X himself. Seven. That must mean planes. Eighteen victims. And this, you recognize, of course. Yes, flechette. Army flyers use it to drop messages or shower gun crews. Exactly. Another point to support my claim. Maybe you're right, Doctor. Go ahead. But I'll continue my investigation anyway. If I can help you, let me know. You can help us right now. We need a trustworthy man to serve as our detective in the air. What about the young man that made the test flight this morning? Jerry Blackwood, the very man. I'll have him report. Good luck. Carl, see the inspector out. And now, what's the first step? On investigation, I have learned that there were only five ex-war aces living in this accident area who could answer to my construction of Pilot X, and any one of them can be guilty. So we shall invite all five to help us unmask this murderer. But if one of them should be Pilot X, then the other four will help us to trap him. 
but we must contact these men and invite them for the weekend. Now, first, there is Lieutenant Baron Otto von Guter. Well, this old space has finally come in handy. <laughs> Just the thing. I have openings in the wall through which I can observe the rooms at all times. This is one of them. Splint, splint. I've installed a system of photoelectric cells. And this light informs me of the approach of anyone. This one is in the dining room, and this one is in the library. I've also planted a system of uh, microphones connected with this magnavox. And the combination allows perfect observation of our suspects all the time they are downstairs. Well, what about those pilots, by the way? Did they all accept? Yes, they'll be here in time for dinner. Good. But that doesn't mean they're going to accept the proposition of staying here to help us catch Pilot X. They will. Whichever one is Pilot X will have to as a blind. The rest will want to, to avoid suspicion. We'd better close this place up. It's almost time for the servants to return. By pressing this molding here, you release the secret spring. We must be very careful to keep this room our secret. Doctor, you still feel sure of your theory? I mean that a pilot X is the murderer and that your plan will uncover him? More positive than ever. That cabin plane this morning, three more killed. His work, I'm sure. These mysterious crashes have not only been killing innocent people, but they've been hurting aviation. Now, don't worry. We will run down pilot X. But I'm afraid he will never be taken alive. Just so he stopped. He will be. What time do our suspects arrive? They're due at seven. Sorry? Well, thank you. You hear the news? <laughs> Helen, my dear, you're looking lovely tonight. Thank you, Father. Gentlemen, our host. My ward, Miss Helen Gage. A truly international group honors her. Lieutenant Ives of the American Expeditionary Force. How do you do? How do you do? Lieutenant LaRue of the French Air Service. Enchanté. Captain Saunders of the Royal Air Force. Lieutenant Thompson, formerly of the Lafayette Escadrille. Miss Gage? Lieutenant Baron von Guder former squad leader of the German Tango Circus. And Lieutenant Blackwood of the United States Air Corps Reserve. I'm very glad to meet you. I'm very glad to meet you, too. Are you? Mm-hmm. I'm glad to have you in my home. Indeed. It's a pleasure. Like a cigarette? No, thank you. I can't get used to American cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I... I have to send to Paris for them. <laughs> and then I make myself think that I can't smoke any other brand. I know. I'm the same way about scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Not at all. Lieutenant, may I replenish your cocktail for you? Oh, with pleasure, sir. Thank you. You know, you look very familiar to me, Lieutenant. I do? Yes. You know, I was captured early in the war and held in a German prison camp at Koblenz. Were you ever around there? No, I never was in that sector. Well, have a cigarette. Thank you. But you mustn't overlook our old Captain Eddie Rickenbacker. And considering the short time that he was in service, I think he was one of the great air fighters. Well, I don't think so, Lieutenant. Then who do you consider as to was the greatest air duelist? You, Mayor, unquestionably. But you must admit that a year previous to that, the German Air Corps was superior to any of the Allies. I own that until we got AC-5. And talking of SCs reminds me of Major Ball, one of the youngest squadron commanders in any Air Force. Well, he was a great pilot. <laughs> I don't agree. Why, take Billy Bishop of Canada with 72 planes to his credit. Why, he was one of the greatest flyers that ever... Amateurs! All of them! Baron von Richthofen, the master of aces. 
80 planes to his credit. And if it hadn't been for the French infantry murdering him in a wrecked plane... That's a lie! Gentlemen, gentlemen. Bush! Fine. Remember, the war is over. Father. Bitte. Beg pardon, sir. Dinner is served. Helen, shall we go into dinner? Yes, we'll sir. be glad to. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, we've had phenomenal success. Our plant's running full capacity. Mm. How many men do you employ at the present time? I can't tell you offhand, but we have more men on the payroll now than we've ever had. That sounds very encouraging, doesn't it? I saw you trying to commit suicide yesterday. Suicide? Mm-hmm. Testing that ship. Oh, I didn't know you wanted to build. Of course not. How could you? Well, oh, I should have sensed it. Oh. My son and I are really the foreign element here. The rest of you all being flyers. So, oh, Mademoiselle Fly? No, not yet. Then you'd make the ideal passenger. Oh, thank you, Captain. Hey, little one. Can you make a noise like a plate? I heard the local aviation school graduated 100 new pilots last week. Uh, well, that's just the trouble. The air's so full of these correspondent school pilots, it's getting increasingly difficult for a real flyer to get a run. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Most of these young transport and male pilots, good, reliable flyers. Seems like it from the way they've been crashing lately. And that, gentlemen, brings us to the main reason for this gathering, the recent air crashes. Shall we adjourn to the library? I have a proposition to put before you. Carl, oh. will you get that Napoleon brandy from the cellar, please? All right. Will you excuse me a moment? I'll be right back. Sure, Nice fella, Carl. I like it. It's polite to like one's host. Then why do you suppose I like my hostess? Just because it's polite? Oh, because you're one of those congenial souls who like people, I suppose? Oh. Well, there are a few people here tonight I could get along very nicely without. See, do you think Pilot X was here tonight? Ah, then you know about that. Yes, Dad told me. Dad? Yes, Mr. Gorey. I always call him Dad because... He seems so much closer to me than just a guardian. Mm. Uh, shall we join the others inside? I know what they're saying. I brought you here to make an appeal in the name of humanity and to safeguard aviation. Why don't you like flyers? I didn't say that. You're all kind of crazy. <laughs> it's fun to be crazy. I wish Carl were a little bit sometimes. He's always so serious. But I think a great deal of Carl. He's always so considerate and attentive. Yes, I've noticed that. Oh, you're still here? Yes, but I'm just going. So you see, there really is a Pilot X, a cold-blooded murderer who is making the air unsafe through some strange impulse. Unbelievable. Then you're all ready and willing to cooperate in capturing Pilot X? I assure you my support, sir. Yes, sir. It's all right with me. Excellent. I felt sure you would. So sure, in fact, that I've already had your rooms assigned here. Now, Lieutenant Blackwood will be in charge of all arrangements. 
He will act for me with full authority. Patrol begins at dawn tomorrow. The objective is to try to draw Pilot X out into the open. There are your patrol sections, as I've outlined them to you. Got them all straight? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, so Yeah. Each of you will serve as a decoy in your particular sector. And this time, gentlemen, Pilot X won't find some harmless commercial plane to contend with. Why, are the planes armed? Fully armed. Call will have them ready. I'm having them carefully checked tonight. They'll be on the line early in the morning. All right, then, gentlemen. We'll call it taps for tonight. And be ready to start the first thing in the morning. Where the light button is, huh? I couldn't find it. Yes, I came down for, for my cigarette. I thought there was some in your room. I told the butler. Oh, no, they... they... Oh, yes, I mean, there are some there, but... Uh, you see, I, I prefer my own brand. Good night, sir. Good night. Maybe LaRue was telling the truth, we... The dining room. Who is it? I thought I heard someone pass my room. But by the time I got out, they'd gone. And I came down here and, and someone hit me from behind. That's all I know. Hmm. Slight bump. Did you see which way he went? As I fell, it, it seemed that I heard someone going upstairs. is next. Signed, X. Now we are certain that Pilot X is in this very house. Why, that means that one of my guests is marked for death. By one of your guests. Well, it's okay. Huh? What? I can have my right. Yeah. Listen, we're all set 10,000 feet. All right. All right. Keep the right. man on your right in sight. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Well, good luck.
But it must have been LaRue. You saw the enmity between him and Von Puder. Well, we mustn't jump at the obvious, Mr. Goring. Pilot X is not one who does the obvious thing. LaRue was patrolling on my right. It would have been impossible for him to shoot down Van Gutter without my seeing him. But the message? One of the men found it in the field. 922X. This is horrible. Who may be next? Something must be done to stop him. Yes. It's small consolation to know that he is proving only my theory of war neurosis. But the patrol, you're going to keep it up? Absolutely. Hey, come on in, you two. The world is awfully warm. Come on. <laughs> Gee, it seems good to relax for a change, doesn't it? Would seem good if Pilot X was down. But I thought an afternoon off would do the boys a lot of good. We've been at that grind pretty steadily. You don't know which one. I mean... Oh, it's horrible to even think about. Why don't you go away for a while? I can't. I'm too worried about Dad and Carl. And all the rest of you. You do include me in that. <laughs> oh, a little bit. Hello? I was talking. What about it? So you've got to get it for me. Why do you think I took that chance this morning? What's that? Oh, all right. Yeah. I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. My pal! Nice day. That wasn't so nice. Oh, it's time he went in swimming. Lieutenant LaRue. Say, do I look like my name is Lieutenant LaRue? I'm sorry, sir. I'm looking for Lieutenant LaRue. Over here. Oh. Telegram for you, sir. Thank you. Jerry. I'm sorry, but uh, I have to leave uh, for a while. Leave? Why? Why, it's, uh, it's uh, rather important and, and personal. But uh, I have to go immediately. How soon can you get back? Well, I, I could get back by uh, 10 o'clock tonight. If I can take a plane. Then do so, by all means. Carl's in a hangar. Tell him I said to give you one. Okay, thanks. No, thanks. I have to go into town for a few minutes. My chauffeur can drive you. No, thank you. I have my own car. Excuse me? I guess I'm the three handicapped coffee drinker in this group. Someday your liver's gonna put you back on scratch. I suppose that's a health tonic. It's only the first one that hurts you. After that, you're on the free list. Mm. I think some of this would be good for my cold, don't you? Oh, good idea. I, I feel one coming on. I beg your pardon, sir. One of the boys found us outside of hangar number four. 10 o'clock tonight. Signed X. Hmm. Very obliging to announce himself in advance. Must be pretty sure of himself. Sure enough to get Van Gutter. 
And if we don't get him tonight, there'll be one less of us. Jerry seems a bit excited. Well, who wouldn't be? I'm getting a bit jittery myself. How long could that flechette have been there? Well, I don't know, sir. You see, we were all working in the hangars. It may have been there for some hours. There's another. A nice collection. And everyone stained with blood. Do you think by any chance LaRue's going to town would have anything to do with these warnings? It's entirely too simple to think that LaRue promised to be back at 10 and then sent this warning. But a theory is only good when it works. At present, I have no good proof of my suspicions. So I can only advise you to depend upon a machine gun. Have you ever been to the city of Rio? I told you I'd never been to South America. Beautiful country. But dangerous. Jungles. Fever. Rio? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, no. What am I talking about? I'm sorry I'm such stupid company. Say, what's wrong with you? Nothing, nothing at all. All of you have been looking at your watches for the past half hour. What is it? Well, to tell you the truth, we've been expecting a visitor. A visitor? Mm. But I have a hunch he won't show up. Where's Jerry? I told you he's staying at the hangar, having the motors warmed up. If there's any warning of a plane, Jerry will phone immediately. Oh. Beastly stuffy in here. Mm. Is that Saunders? I sure do. Hello? Yes, Jerry. All right. That's it. Come on, we're going up. There they go. Three of them. This time, LaRue. Well, 
There's the leader. Found in the driveway. It could have been placed there any time, I suppose. I'm puzzled about last night's affair. The question is, was LaRue shot down accidentally or deliberately by one of the planes piloted by Thompson, Saunders, or Jerry? I include you hypothetically, of course. Or was LaRue the victim of another plane? By assumption, Pilot X. Well, I'm sure there were five planes in all at one time. And I thought I caught a glimpse of an X on one's wing. Then if there was the fifth plane, our problem is to establish the identity of its pilot. What about Lieutenant Ives? Where is he, by the way? He hasn't returned from that few minutes in town yet. Mm -hmm. well, our next step is to account for his movements last night. As soon as he shows up. If he does... Then you mean that Ives may not return? I don't know. The whole thing's sort of getting on my nerves. Though. Who is that? Lieutenant Ives. Good. Morning. Good morning. Let go for a while. I want to talk to you. You've heard about a rule? Oh, yes. I saw it in the papers. Well, too bad. That's one more pilot out of circulation. And you once thought there were too many, you know. Hey. What are you driving at? Where were you last night? You said you were going to town for a few minutes. Well, I did. Well, I was detained. What did you go for? That's my personal business. Maybe. Did you go anyplace else? No. Say, what are you two trying to do? Pin something on me? Hello? Blackwood speaking. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Inspector. Goodbye. You sure you didn't go anyplace else but the town last night? No, I told you once. That was Gallagher. Says one of his men followed you after you left town last night in an automobile. Oh, so I'm being shadowed. You are? By a detective who traced you to the municipal airport. Says you spoke to a pilot of a plane that landed at 9 o'clock. Anything else? Yeah. You both left town in your automobile. He followed, but he lost you. Later, when he returned to the airfield, the plane was gone. Now look here. I don't have to stay here to take any more of this. You'd better stay. This is no time for you to walk out. Well, what about last night? So that's what it's all about. You think that I killed LaRue? Oh, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just asking some questions. Did you fly at any time after you left here last I've answered all the questions I'm going to. Now, if you think I killed LaRue, prove it. Stop it, I say! Stop it! Quit hopping on killing! You're driving me mad with your crazy suspicions! All I hear is killing! You've got me killing men in my sleep! Of course I'm a killer! We're all killers! Innocent lives on our bloody hands! Thomas! Murder in the air! You want to hear about murder in the air? I'll tell you! I'll tell you stories that'll make you shrivel in horror! Men dropping thousands of feet! Machine guns spilling their blood! Human beings crashed to bits by me! Burned alive by me! They! Stop it! Stop it, I say, or I'll... <laughs> Take it easy, old boy. Take it easy. Our 
another wild goose chase. I took after that black plane, turned out to be the mailman. Hey, Ives, let's take a swim. All right. Maybe we can find him in the bottom of the pool. All right. I'll stay here. I've got something to work out. There was a letter for you in the last mail. At least I found it after the postman rang. Thanks. Look at that. Hmm. It's curious as to my identity. Meet me tomorrow morning because... This fellow hits me in a soft spot when he appeals to my curiosity. I hope he intends to keep that date. It's an opportunity. Well, it's genuine at any rate. Same lettering. Say, What did you make of that exhibition of Saunders, by the way? He'll bear watching. A neurotic with persistent hallucinations that could induce violent insanity.
Carl found this at the hangar in Ives' locker. It matches the paint on the wing. You'd better get your mind off of this. It'll drive you absolutely crazy. I'm nearly crazy already. I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am, old man. Thanks. I've got to get over the plant. I'll see you later. All right. When I think of the satisfaction with which I pulled that trigger. You would have done the same thing in time of war. And this is war. You can't blame yourself for something you didn't know. Mere circumstantial evidence could have been planted in Ives' locker. By Saunders? No one saw him until the middle of the morning. He claims he couldn't sleep and went for a long walk. Well, of course, it could have been Ives. By the way, have you read the last one? No, I brought it in just as my gardener found it. Mm, Pilot X. It's just the same as the others, only he has added one more to his score. Beastly night. Lightning like, like gun flashes. Thunder like heavy artillery. Yeah, it's terrible. Maybe a shot of brandy would do us all good. I'm a bit shaky myself since poor Thompson's death. Who's that? I am. As usual, I've just been down to the village on business with a friend. Uh, just a moment, Ives. We'd like to talk to you. Well, this is a pilot X, I suppose. You ought to know. So what are you getting at? A few questions we'd like you to answer. Personally, I think the matter's gone beyond all of us. I'd like to see the whole investigation turned over to the police. Good with me. You can count me out any time. In fact, I'm through right now. No, you're not, Ives. Nobody is through till we get that killer. Till every man in this house gets a clean bill of health. Well, wait a minute. Are you accusing me? You and Saunders are both under suspicion. What do you mean? Von Gudek was killed by somebody in his house. So was Leroux. You've been staying in the house, haven't you? And you fly, don't you, Lieutenant Blackwood? All right. I killed my friend Thompson because somebody framed us both in a dirty cowardly trap. Say, wait a minute. Now, just a minute, Jack. Let me get this out of my system. The man who did these killings is the lowest type of coward. No way I have ever known in any army would refuse fair combat out in the open. I'm flying tomorrow morning from 6 o'clock on. If Pilot X has one ounce of nerve left in his system, he'll be out there to meet me. Is this Mr. Goring? This is Dr. Norris. I've got it. I know who Pilot X is. Can you come over right away? Yes, I'll be right there. Good.
Inspector Gallagher. This is the Goring residence. Locate him. Tell him to call me at once. Where's Jerry? Do you know? In his room, I guess. Well, Blackwood's not in his room. I have been there and he's gone. But he can't get far. I left men stationed around the house when I came here. Great. Spread the word around to pick up Jerry Blackwood. Have him sent here immediately. Very good, Inspector. Is there something special you want him for? Yes. For murder. Murder? He is Pilot X. No. No. Jerry couldn't possibly be. But you yourself recommended him. Yes, I know. But proof is proof. In the first place, he shot down Thompson's plane. At oh, that was just an accident. So he says. And what about this? Found in Jerry's room. And this, found on a shelf. Blood stained with his initials, J.B. Seems unbelievable. Thank pardon, Inspector. <laughs> He's got away. Black was just taken off in his plane. Gone. Is there anybody else around here that can fly? Saunders and I. Good. We'll get Blackwood if we have to shoot him down. Inspector Gallagher wishes to speak with you upstairs. Oh, thank Saunders. He's certain that he's gone. Where's Lieutenant Ives' room? Down the hall. Oh, uh, where's Lieutenant Saunders' plane? On the line, miss. He asked to have it ready early. Oh, thank you. Lieutenant Ives. Lieutenant Ives. Hmm. Just as I thought.
Do you recognize this? Von Gutter. Now I know why you look at Carl all during the dinner. The Army Intelligence Department has just identified this as the person deserting from our side and joining the German Air Forces under the name of Muller. Afterwards, he told the story about being in a German camp and escaping just before armistice. Poor Dr. North. His theory was right after all. An ace with the bloodlust of war. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what kind of a motor it is? Sure. Supercharged Walsh. Who? Supercharged Walsh. Oh, I suppose you can tell me where it is without looking. Uh-huh. Two southeast. Oh, it isn't. Come on, get up and look. Oh, 
Oh, it isn't over there. It's over here. Look. 